Hey friends, I'm Trinity Mitchell, better known as your friend, Trent, and welcome to Friend Fusion. Thank you so much for being a part of my community. I know that this would not be possible without you. I'm going to say it again. Thank you. I'm so grateful that you would tune in here at Friend Fusion. What I love most about this platform is it allows all of us to get better. It's not like that next reality TV show that we all get around to get the latest tea. But when you come to Friend Fusion, you just want to get better. You just want to get better and better and better. Because we're all friends here. I'm your friend. You're my friend. I want you to do me a favor. Share the video right now. Stop what you're doing. Share the video. I'm sharing mine right now. Text a friend and say, yo, Friend Fusion is on. Especially those group messages, they got all the juicy tea. Y'all need to be better. Because we're all about getting better. And here at Friend Fusion, that's what we do best. We get better. I love you guys. I can't wait to spend the rest of the evening with you. We ain't gonna be here for a long time, but it's definitely gonna be a good time. Whatever you do, go friend. Hey friends, I'm Trinity Mitchell, better known as your friend, Trent, and welcome to Friend Fusion. Thank you so much for being a part of my community. I know that this would not be possible without you. I'm going to say it again. Thank you. I'm so grateful that you would tune in here at Friend Fusion. What I love most about this platform is... It allows all of us to get better. It's not like that next reality TV show that we all get around to get the latest tea. But when you come to Friend Fusion, you just want to get better. You just want to get better and better and better. Because we're all friends here. I'm your friend. You're my friend. I want you to do me a favor. Share the video right now. Stop what you're doing. Share the video. I'm sharing mine right now. Text a friend and say, yo, Friend Fusion is on. Especially those group messages, they got all the juicy tea. Y'all need to be better. Because we're all about getting better. And here at Friend Fusion, that's what we do best. We get better. I love you guys. I can't wait to spend the rest of the evening with you. We ain't gonna be here for a long time, but it's definitely gonna be a good time. Whatever you do, go friend. I am Trinity Mitchell, better known as your friend Trend, and I have to introduce you to my friends over at Higher Purpose Co. Now, you may be wondering, Trinity, why do we need to know about Higher Purpose Co? Because, friend, they empower black entrepreneurs right here in Mississippi. They are doing the work to literally give us political, cultural, as well as financial power. Can we get into that? Can we get into that, friend? What I love most about Higher Purpose Co is they remind me of me. Like, here it is. I don't do like the cancel culture, but I tell you guys all the time that Friend Fusion is a sign to cancel the cancel culture. Well, let me just tell you this. Higher Purpose Co. is a sign to cancel everything that the enemy plotted against black people like generational poverty, institutionalized racism, and structured inequality. I absolutely love partnering with them. And I want you to join me, friend. Listen, I'm the kind of friend that you can trust my friends. You know what I'm saying? So I need you to do me a favor, friend. I want you to go to higherpurposeco.org today like right now and I need you to find a way that you can partner or donate to this foundation because it is making so many of our lives better here in Mississippi yes higherpurposecode.org go now thanks friends Did you really think I was going to play nice with you? Did you really think I was going to come in here and be what? Above it all? You are a mean woman. You asked for it. Life without parole were the words that hovered over today's guest. And now the word is undefeated. I don't know if you're dealing with anything that may you may be struggling with ridicule, public scrutiny, and just simply having a narrative painted against you that is the complete opposite of who you actually are. 
But today's episode will remind you that God will speak for you. We serve a God who vindicates friends. I hope you are ready to be lifted, encouraged, and free from whatever bondage has been placed on you. Stay tuned for today's episode of Friend Fusion. Friend Fusion, marker, and action. Hey, friends. Welcome to today's episode of Friend Fusion. I'm your host, your friend, Trin, and I am elated to introduce today's guest to you. She is a reflection of strength, peace, honor, all the things that you can think of that is absolutely amazing. I am honored to have her. Please, friends, welcome to Friend Fusion, to Kia Beverly. Ah, you going to scream that? <laughs> Thank you. I'm good. Say hey to our friends. Hey, friends. <laughs> so here in Friend Fusion, we have a culture where everybody's our friend. We just believe in love, valuing, and honor, honoring people. And I think what I love most about my audience and my community of people here, all of my friends, is that we're really addicted to getting better. So all of the stories and all of the conversations that we have are centered in how we as people consistently grow and grace and get better so welcome thank you i thank thought that you would be a, a beautiful guest to have because you absolutely do uh embody that growing graciously so welcome 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 thank you yes yeah, you welcome once you welcome twice y'all know the rest of it <laughs> if y'all know it more you're welcome and G- you welcome in the name of jesus christ <laughs> <laughs> for y'all easter speech today <laughs> all right so we're gonna hop right in so it's been about two years ago maybe three years ago, and I was sitting on the internet scrolling, and I saw your story come across my timeline. Brandon would tell you, I was furious. I was so upset because after I started going through, reading all the articles, seeing what was going on, because I couldn't believe this was actually happening to somebody from a little city like Port Gibson. Right. Like, you know, this cannot be real. So this is, I mean, I'm telling you my thoughts out loud. This is literally what I was thinking as I was scrolling. So I started going through all the articles, I see all these videos of you, see so many pictures. I'm like, there's nothing here that shows that she's guilty of this. Like, she did not do this. And so I worked with two other ladies. Okay, so I told you about Warrior Nation. We're a prayer ministry. Mm -hmm. And so I came and told them about it. I said, listen, y'all, we got to pray. Because this this girl did not do this. Nothing in my spirit is saying she's done this. And they have sentenced her to life in prison. Like, it was, it disturbed me. I tossed and turned because I just felt like that could be me. Like, life as I know it is normal to being in prison. I mean, it really rocked me. And so I'm just going to allow you to tell your story today. I don't want to go into it because you can tell it best. So, um, yeah, let's testify. So um, I met my husband, Morris, in May or June of 2014. Mm Mm-hmm. We got married in um, July of 2016. Mm-hmm. And so, unbeknownst to me, while we were dating, mm-hmm. he uh, had relations mm-hmm. with a female from his hometown. Mm-hmm. At the time, I still lived in Hattiesburg. He lived in Port Gibson. Mm-hmm. And um, so, I had... By this time, I had relocated to Port Gibson um, because his mom had COPD, and so he wanted to be closer to her. It was just easier Mm -hmm. for us to go there. So I was three months pregnant, three months newlywed, Mm -hmm. and I get a text message Mm -hmm. from an unknown number. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had just recently announced my pregnancy Mm -hmm. with uh, my oldest, Aubrey. Yeah. And... This, the text message said, this is Morris's real child and baby's mom. 
and it was a picture of a, a female and a child. And mm -hmm. I was like, you know, I asked somebody, you know, what is this? Is somebody's playing on your phone? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I ended up tracking the number. Mm -hmm. You know, like you put it in the app, and it tells you uh, how to reset your password. Mm -hmm. So the app, I think it was Tech Spirit at the time, mm -hmm. it told me that it was his cousin's email address. Mm -hmm. Had her name in the email address. Wow. And so I told him about it, told him to handle it, because if she's playing on my phone, you need to handle it. Mm -hmm. So then, anyway, a few days later, she tells me, I need you to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. So she told me um, about the mom and the baby. Mm -hmm. And I told him about it, like, I know now. Yeah. And an issue that became, something that became an issue within myself and his family is that they didn't know, they didn't understand or respect boundaries. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know that at the time. Mm -hmm. So she got upset with me because I did not divulge how my husband and I were handling this situation. Mm -hmm. Uh, anyway, I reached out to the baby's mom on Facebook, let her know, um, because I sent her a, a friend request because, you know, if you don't send a friend request, they don't get the message. They don't get it. the message. Uh -huh. So I sent her a friend request, then I sent her a message and I said, Hey, I'm not trying to be your friend, meaning I'm not trying to be messy or anything. Mm -hmm. I'm sending you a friend request so you can get my message. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk. Uh, you know, I, I've heard about the situation. I can't remember the message verbatim, but it was basically me saying, let's get a uh, blood test. Mm -hmm. If it's his, we're moving forward with it. If not, we know. Right. We get the blood test done. It comes back maybe a week and a half later. She was his that same day. Mm -hmm. We picked her up, went to Walmart. Mm -hmm. She and I sat in the car while he went in because it was cold. Um... And he got, I sent him a list because he had no idea what he was doing. Yeah. So I sent him a list of everything he was going to need to get started. Mm -hmm. So while he's in Walmart, she's in the back seat in her car seat. I'm in the front seat. She's three months old. Mm -hmm. So if, everything is threes. Um, I'm three months pregnant, three months wow. new way. She's three months old. She was born three days after we got married. Mm -hmm. So... Um, so I was in the front seat, and she was in her car seat, and she started, like, um, whining. Mm -hmm. And so at first I tried to talk to her. Mm -hmm. Hey, Dry, it's okay, it's okay. Mm -hmm. But she's not hearing it. She's a yeah. baby. So <laughs> I get out, and I sit next to her, and I um, pick her up, and I tell her, hey, mm -hmm. I'm Kia. Mm -hmm. I'm your dad's wife. Mm -hmm. He has no idea what he's doing, mm -hmm. so I'm going to help him out, and we're going to do our best to raise you. Wow. And from then on, that was my ride or die. It was every day yeah. that her mom didn't have her. She was with me, or we were, I mean, it was, it was just a great relationship. It was, it was just how crazy how life turns out. But yeah. So fast forward to a year later, um, October. The 22nd, she ended up um, coming with us because his mom was in the hospital on a mm -hmm. ventilator, and they told her, told us that our family needed to come. Mm -hmm. So that included grandchildren. So we got her um, from his cousins. His cousins had had her the night before. Mm -hmm. And we take her to the hospital. We spend there all day there. We go home that night. She didn't get a bath, and I mean, it was late. Mm -hmm. We didn't get a bath, so we put her in a, in a crib. The next morning, we wake up, she's in her crib, deceased. Mm -hmm. um, we are just, immediately we think SIDS, because mm -hmm. we don't know of anything that has happened mm -hmm. that would have led to her being deceased. So, right. Um, Everybody that was so home. traumatic. It was mm -hmm. terribly traumatic to where it gave us, uh, I guess, a form of PTSD to yeah. where even now with this pregnancy, we're thinking about getting the little um, sock 
Mm -hmm. that monitors oxygen levels um, in their sleep. With my, with Aubrey, she was six months old, but we were about to transition her to a crib Mm -hmm. that put us back. Yeah. And with my son, it was pretty much the same way. I think he slept with us until he was maybe two or three because it was like, just you want to follow protocol Mm -hmm. and put him in the crib. But then... You don't want to experience that again. Exactly. Right, right. So, um, autopsy comes back a week or or two later, and we're told that she died from blunt force trauma. Hmm. So we're adamant, like, it didn't happen with us. Mm -hmm. Because it didn't. Yeah. So, you know, you need to figure out where it happened. Mm -hmm. A year and a half later, we're indicted, capital murder. We were living in... Louisiana, Metairie, and um, Morris came home from work Mm -hmm. early one day and told me that we had, it was a Thursday, so we had until Sunday night to pack up our entire three-bedroom apartment and move to Mississippi. We both had jobs. We had to move back to Mississippi. Wow. In order to possibly get a bond. And at that time, what I were had, your thoughts when he told you that? Oh my goodness! So I had actually, I had Aubrey was she had just turned two. Mm-hmm. Morris was about two months old, mm-hmm. and we were driving down Veterans and Metairie, and I had been looking at a review, and I mm-hmm. saw him. We had just left Taco Bell, mm-hmm. and I saw him in the review, and I, I said. It's too early for him to be home. You know, maybe he's just coming home early. Yeah. And so we get out, and, you know, when, you're, when you've been with children and you get with an adult, you just talk. Yeah. And so I'm just talking, like, oh, my goodness, let me tell you this, let me tell you that. And looking back, I noticed, but at the time, I didn't, the look on his face. Mm-hmm. It was very, it was, like, in shock. Mm-hmm. And so he, we go inside. I put... Morris down in his car seat, and I think Aubrey just went to play. And he said, can you sit down for a minute? Mm -hmm. And I said, no. Like, what's what's wrong? Yeah. And he said, can you please sit down? I said, no, I'm not sitting down. Tell me what's going on. Mm -hmm. And he said, they indicted us today. And I said, what do you mean? He said, they indicted us for capital murder. And I immediately dropped uh, and we both cried. I mean, we cried. I don't even know how long we sat on the floor crying. Yeah. Um, and so finally I called. We shared an attorney at the time, Anthony mm-hmm. Hodeberg from Natchez. I called him and I said, like, what do we do? And he said, the most I can do is try to get y'all a bond. Mm-hmm. Y'all have to relocate to Mississippi now. Um so we did that. Uh, I think that was the first time I realized how children watch because the next day, Aubrey told my mom, she said, um, my mom is sad. And my hmm. mom said, why? She said, because she's been crying. I didn't know, you know, like, like I said, I didn't yeah. even know where she was when all that happened. Mm-hmm. But she, children watch. And mm-hmm. so from there... Like, people talk about how, or people may say how I don't, emotions may not be shown. Yeah. Because they don't deserve to see that side. Mm-hmm. So, um, from then on, it was as much as possible within the privacy of us two. Yeah, yeah. And so, I, um, we relocated uh, to... Poor Gibson mm-hmm. moved back in with his parents, and we turned ourselves in that Monday morning. Mm-hmm. We spent a week in the jail there, and the following Monday, we had a bond hearing. We were granted bond, each a million dollar mm-hmm. bond. Um, I mean, we got out that day though, but yeah, only by the grace of God. Yeah. In a week in jail where you've never committed a crime at all. It seemed like so much A movie longer. or something. Oh, my. And yeah. it was, and Port Gibson's jail was like, 
there was no, I mean, it was pretty much like something from back in the 70s or 60s on TV. There was nothing there. Just a sale. There's no TV. You do get a phone when they let you out. But other than that, mm-hmm. you are, it, I can see how people can go crazy in somewhere, like, in a place like this. Yes. Because there's, there was no kind of outlet or anything. Mm-hmm. Well, so uh, we got out. Maybon got out. They were seeking the death penalty. Mm-hmm. So, wow, I didn't even know that. They initially did. So uh, we were able to get, we let, because we could tell that they were more so after myself, mm-hmm. I got the, um, what is it? It's like state rep, it's more than a public defender. It was a Mississippi's public office of public defender, something mm-hmm. like that. So it's for a, either death penalty um, representation mm-hmm. or if you are convicted and you get the death penalty, the appeal, they do that. Okay. So that was the office uh, that I got. And we, people asked, like, why did I have a public defender? And he had a paid attorney. They were not going after him. Mm-hmm. So if I would have had a paid attorney, mm-hmm. we would not have been able to afford it. Right. So we're thinking, okay, let me get the public defender. Mm-hmm. It's the state office, so, you know, they must be so much better. Right. And we have endless resources mm-hmm. because we're co-defendants. We share the experts. Got so it. we'll have state of Mississippi pay for the experts, and we'll share. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. hmm well, my state, my public defender was horrible. Wow. Um, I mean, I still have the emails that I was sent him, like, just month after month telling him, basically because I was getting a vibe that he may not have felt mm-hmm. my innocence or yes. believed in it. Even if he didn't, his job was to re- defend me, and right. I didn't feel like he was doing that. But mm-hmm. They wanted to paint the narrative that you were the evil stepmom. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he was letting them... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Feed it. Yeah. And so... But God's grace. Amen. Listen, there were so many people like me that was like, this is... No. Insanity. This is not that. Never saw you before, never met you before, but there were a lot of people that was like, nah, she didn't do this. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's one of the flaws in the justice system is mm-hmm. that the defendant is expected or encouraged mm-hmm. to stay quiet. Got it. But you have the DA's office feeding the news mm-hmm. their side of the case. Right. So, as the public, all we see is mm-hmm. what the what the di- district attorney's office right. is put right. out. Essentially, right. this their case that's in the media. Mm-hmm. And so, for two years, we're really from the time of her passing, so from 2017 to 2021, all everyone had was the district attorney's side mm-hmm. and what the family, what the, their side was putting out. Right, right. And so, and we were told, just be quiet. Mm-hmm. Don't say anything. So, um, ended up going to trial and, well, no, before trial, like a week before trial, mm-hmm. I thought it was going to be over. Yeah. Because their expert wrote a letter saying that, that he wanted to change his findings. Mm-hmm and say that she could have suffered an injury a week, at least a week or so before we got her, Mm -hmm. and just had been in a lucid interval. Right. So I'm thinking, okay, well, he's just told y'all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're like, no, still the jury has to decide. Mm -hmm. So we go to trial. Everything is sounding beautiful, like it's making sense. It's like this is what we've been saying. And then it takes the jury less than an hour to convict. Mm-hmm. And this is in Port Gibson. This is in Port Gibson. Mm-hmm. So the conviction occurs. My brother is there. My mom is there. Um, and I'm transported to Natchez jail. And I'm there. Now that's when I stand with Kia starts. I think that day or the next day. Mm-hmm. Um, and because I had been telling them 
for years to be quiet. My friends, my family be quiet. Mm -hmm. At this point, they're like, okay, well, you're in jail now, so you're going to tell us nothing. We're going to yes. say, we're going to do what we want to say now. And, and I thank God for them. I do, too. <laughs> I do, too. Um, so I rarely had a say in much of anything. Mm -hmm. Because even if I did give my say, they still did what they did. Yeah. Which mm -hmm. I appreciate it. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I see why people go back to jail. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's not like on TV mm -hmm. at all. Um, and we would call prison a summer camp that you can't go home from. Mm. Because it's... They make it so, it's not fun, mm -hmm. but there's no order. Mm. It's, um, Does that make it more difficult to be there? No, I think the only thing that make it, made it difficult was when I called home. Mm. The, what made it difficult is being treated less than human. Mm-hmm. The conditions, too. Yeah, the and conditions, especially Mississippi time in, pri in prison, because I still have friends that are there now, and they'll call me, and I'm just like, I'm always asking, how's the heat? Mm -hmm. Because there's no central air. Wow. Um, and it's like a, a gym set up, so it's open bay. It's 100 or so women, and they only have, they may have mm -hmm. one or two fans that blow air and water it like blows cold water out of the fan yeah they may have it wow and um so it's it's, it's horrible conditions mm -hmm. and so um but i was able to get a job i spent well i spent maybe three months in natchez mm -hmm. and then i went to mdoc mm -hmm. i got a job as an alcohol and drug counselor mm -hmm. So I you can have a job as an inmate? Okay. Oh, yeah. I mm -hmm. mean, I have so many. I mean, you could work in cosmetology, you could go to cosmetology school and uh, work in cosmetology. You can, um, they have the women do the lawn, rob the zero turns, and they weed eat. They do. Wow. They have gardens. Mm -hmm. um, you could work. I don't think the females work in the kitchen. Yes, female work in the kitchen. Um, and counselors like myself, I mean, it's so many, mm -hmm. but I, despite all that I just named, there's like maybe, t let's say 20 positions mm -hmm. and 2,000 women still. Right, right. So those that are still locked down all day mm -hmm. have nothing constructive to do other than try to get drugs or whatever. Right. And I think that was another thing that was like, this is not okay. It's like the amount of drugs that are in prison. Wow, it's, that's crazy. Yes. Right. How did they get them in there? We ain't going to go there, huh? <laughs> We're not going to go. That's crazy. No, but yeah, yeah mm -hmm. exactly. So that was that way. But then I um, I got my new trial in January. It was, no, October of 2021. So yes. eight months later. And How did you feel when you heard you got a new trial? So I would usually call Morris mm -hmm. when I got home from work. Got home, Lord have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> when I got in from work, I usually call Morris. And I would ask him um, any news mm -hmm. because we were still waiting on the judge to make a decision. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it would be either no, not yet. Um, I'm still waiting on a call back. Mm -hmm. But I happened to call that day and I said, hey, um, have you heard anything? Mm -hmm. And he said... You coming home? It's all he said. He just said. He just said. He said you coming home, and I didn't believe him because mm -hmm. he plays so much. And I mm -hmm. said, "Quit playing." And he said, "He said you coming home." Mm -hmm. She signed it today. I said, "Are you serious?" He said, "Yes, I promise." And again, I mean, he just—he's just—and not that I would think he would play about something like that, right? But it's something that to be in a place like that and to Eight hear months? news like that. Yeah, I said, "Let me call you back." So I had to call my mom. Mm -hmm. She confirmed it. And then I had to call my best friend. Mm -hmm. And then she confirmed it. And so then it was kind of real. Yeah. And then I called him back. And we just talked. But I still I stayed there for about another two weeks, maybe. Mm -hmm. 
And then I was transported back to Port Gibson. Mm -hmm. um, stayed in there maybe a week. And then that's when she gave me another million dollar bond. Mm -hmm. And then um, I came home. Yeah. I came home. I picked my babies up from school because they had no idea. And when you picked them up from school, what was their response? What was their shock? Like? Yeah. Because mommy had been at work. Yeah. So they, you know, it was more so Aubrey um, that was like, Mommy, you're off. Yeah. And, but it was still just so, it was, they were so normal. It was a normal interaction, though. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then we went home, and I don't think I, I think I did not, it still didn't feel real. Mm -hmm. Maybe for like at least a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. But were you able to like move about through the city and like go out and? Oh, Go to the yeah. grocery store, stuff like that. Um, or was it hard for you to do? No? No, I yeah. mean, there was no adjustment. I think the only adjustment was the amount of people that would come up and tell me how happy they were. Yeah. Um, that was always an adjustment, whether I was in Port Gibson. Mm -hmm. or, no, not Port Gibson. I really went to Port Gibson. Vicksburg or Hattiesburg. Even Jackson, Meridian. Mm -hmm. um, and it was like, wow. It, it made me feel good. I never had a bad interaction. It's beautiful. Ever. I never had a bad message. I used to get them before mm -hmm. when there was only one side out. Yeah. But after that, no. Yes. So tell me this. How was your, well, maybe. I'm just going to ask you this. Have you been able to forgive the person that caused all this in your life? So there's, there's not just one mm -hmm. person. And I don't think, the thing is, I don't think anybody calls. Mm -hmm. I think there are multiple parts that led to what occurred. I think everybody that played a part, mm -hmm. um, I don't even really think about them. Mm, I love that. Yeah, I, I don't, I do not, mm -hmm. I... I really pray that they are able to find peace within themselves mm -hmm. and to deal with whatever demons they mm -hmm. were facing to, to cause them to do such things, especially the people that are in offices, mm -hmm. for you to use and abuse your power. Yeah. Um, I always use the analogy of a child that's putting together a puzzle. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like a child that's putting together a puzzle, if the pieces don't fit, they'll just try to smash them Right, in right, right. And so that's what I envision when I see these people in office who abuse their power to smash the pieces. And they do that to so many people. Yes. Yeah. And it's, I think, I think the worst part of it is that these people continue to get in these positions mm -hmm. because we as people always have that it can't happen to me mentality. Mm -hmm. So even though you've seen what this person in office or in this office or position has done, mm -hmm. you think it's just a fluke or a one-time thing and that they won't do it again right? until it's your family member or even you. Yeah. And I hate it. Yeah. I hate it. I wish I could fix the mentality of people, but yeah. if only... Well, God has been so good to you. He's been yes. faithful. Yes. Everything has just turned around. Yes. So, you know, you went back to trial, I think, 2021, right? No, 2022 was 2022. Trial. Mm -hmm. Last year, early. Early. Early yeah, last huh? year, yeah. And you were freed, exonerated of yes. this crime. No more having to live with this over your head. Yes. What was it like hearing those words that you are not guilty? So that was the only reason that I wish the Hattiesburg Patriot, the guy who had been covering it, mm -hmm. Um, I was the only reason I wish she could have stayed mm -hmm. to get that reaction because what happened in court after that was insanity. Really? So um, the judge had already said, which they typically do, to keep all reactions 
calm, don't mm -hmm. do anything, or uh, basically don't show a reaction. Mm -hmm. Well, so when we, they called us back and said that the verdict was ready. Mm -hmm. um, when we came in, the aisles were lined with law enforcement. Mm -hmm. There was a heavy law enforcement uh, presence in mm -hmm. the courtroom. And um, matter of fact, there were maybe 10 at least officers from Port Gibson standing behind me. Mm -hmm. And so the DA's office had not returned yet, so we're sitting here waiting. The judge is on the bench. No, the judge is not on the bench. All of my defense team, I had three attorneys with me. Um, the clerks are there. My family is here. And um, I actually asked if I could go sit with Morris. And they told me no. So I'm thinking, is it guilty? Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm terrified because I'm like, yeah, this, this must is, be it. This, yeah, yeah, like this uh -huh. is, this is it. Mm -hmm. Last time I felt good about it, it did not go good. Mm -hmm. And before I came in, I had actually told my friend, I said, I'm, um, I should have called my children. Mm -hmm. I should have FaceTimed them. And um, at this point, I can't. And so I'm sitting there, and everybody is so engulfed in the intensity of what's going on right mm -hmm. now that nobody notices that I pass out. You literally pass out. I literally, I'm leaning over, and the next thing I know is I'm waking up. Everything's black, and I get spots are coming in. So I'm seeing everything again, and I'm here. I'm hot. Yeah. I passed out. Nobody knows. I'm sitting between two attorneys, my attorneys, and nobody knows. <laughs> they thought you wouldn't have took a nap. I guess so. <laughs> and so the DA's office comes in, and then... They read the verdict, I'm standing up, and I immediately fall to the floor. I'm like, I'm under the table, and I'm just like, I let out this cry, mm -hmm. this, this scream that was so, I can't even explain it. Mm -hmm. um, and then my family just completely just embarrassed me. I mean, it was just, <laughs> like the judge just told y'all. <laughs> Don't do this. Don't do this. <laughs> My mama's up. She's up yelling. They had worked so hard. They had. They they deserve the clown. They should. You should be okay with the clown. I mean, <laughs> so they all get escorted out yeah. at that point. They have to leave. Mm -hmm. Um, and the judge asks me if there's anything I want to say, and I just put my hand up and say thank you, Jesus, because mm -hmm. that's all I can say. That yeah. was it. And then we had to leave. They mm -hmm. told us we had to leave the print. Wow. So I didn't know. I don't know if there was a threat of anything. Uh -huh. But they told us we had to get off of the premises mm -hmm. ASAP. That is such a beautiful ending. Yes. Because it doesn't end for a lot of people like that. Exactly. Yeah. And I, you putting that image in our head, that imagery in our, in our heads, the forcing the puzzle, pieces to the puzzle to fit where they actually don't fit. And that happens, that injustice happens to so many of us, especially people who look like us. Exactly. Yeah. So what have you done since experiencing all of this to just maintain your mental health? Because I'm sure that you have a lot to, to fight through. Um, I have to take social media breaks. Mm -hmm. um, I did social media a lot last year mm -hmm. because it was a way of income mm -hmm. because at the time I still have this felony mm -hmm. on my record. So I couldn't get a job. Right. So I used social media as a method of income. Once mm -hmm. I was able to get a job, I took a step back yeah. in a huge way. Mm -hmm. um, I continue to do that. My husband ensures that there are days. Well, so while I was incarcerated, mm -hmm. I had to detach myself from my kids mm -hmm. because I, I couldn't I think about them while I was um, just doing anything. Like, I, I, would, I, I try not to think mm -hmm. about them mm -hmm. um, because it put me in a really bad mental space. Mm -hmm. So I would write them letters. I would um, pay some of the girls um, their to make me cards and stuff, mm -hmm. to draw cards and send them to them. But other than that, unless I was on the phone with them, I try not to be mommy mm -hmm. because I could not be mommy. It hurt too bad. It did. Yeah. It really did. Mm -hmm. 
And so what that did when I came home mm -hmm. was there was this detachment between me and my children. Mm. I would become like overwhelmed or overstimulated mm -hmm. because they were being children. And I had not dealt with it yeah. in eight months. Mm -hmm. And so he would make sure, and still does, mm -hmm. that I would get my um, mental health breaks, mm -hmm. um, whether it's an afternoon or whether it's a weekend. Mm -hmm. So then I'm able to decompress. Um, currently, um, I still do devotions. Mm -hmm. I still have to, um, I think a big part is just remembering mm -hmm. where I've come from because I think a big thing that I struggle with right now is being five years behind. Mm -hmm. um, I'm five years behind where I want to be educationally, where I want to be career-wise. Mm -hmm. And so I have to remind myself that I'm where God wanted One, me yes, to be. Yes. And so all of that, I doing all of that, keeps me grounded and mm -hmm. keeps me sane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. And you you have done such a good job at just coming back into your role. Yes. Um, and just showing up. So many people are inspired by you. I'm inspired by Thank you. Thank you. Um, your story has just blessed my life in ways that I can never be able to actually articulate. But I knew as a stepmother, I could see your love for her. Yeah. Uh, in the videos, I think I remember watching one video showing Brandon the phone, you combing her hair. And you just loving on her, and that's the same. I took on the same kind of love toward my stepson Tyler, mm -hmm. and I think when Brandon and I started dating, Tyler was six, and <laughs> he came into the room one day. Brandon left us alone, which wasn't the, the best idea yet. Mm -hmm. And he came and said, "How old are you?" And I said, 20? He said, "My mama, 21. She could beat you up." <laughs> I said, "We're not gonna worry <laughs> about her beating me up, Tyler. <laughs> well, let's just focus on us and where right. we go, how we go." And you know, it reminded me of the conversation you had with Jariah, even though she was just three months. Right. Like, I love you. I'm not mad at you. I don't want to beef with you. Let's let's just see how we That's can it. do this. Right. Yeah. And so, um, and I, 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 to this day, I don't. I, you know, I, it's, people say it's hard to say you love them like your own when you don't have any yet. I'm looking forward to that. But I committed myself to not being an evil stepmom. I'm not, right. not going to be that girl. Uh -huh. um, because I knew within just a few months of, of us dating that Brandon would be my husband. But I, every time we moved or anything, I'm like, the first room that's going to be set up is Tyler's because he would never come here and not find a place. Right. You know, and try to find no, Nobody stand with us longer than desire because they're in his space. When he that's comes, it. Like, any, all of that stuff. Because I just felt like that was necessary. Exactly. Especially when the child is already not in the home permanently with exactly. dad or with mom. It's so important for that other co-parent, that additional person, to be peace, you that's know? It. You got to think about yourself as a child and how those things affected you yeah. if you actually dealt with it. And what you don't, I think one thing that helped me is I knew what I dealt with as a child and I just knew I didn't want another child to deal with it, you right. know? And so I really admired the way I saw you loving on her, caring for her. And I'm like, nobody that loves a child like this, and I don't mean any disrespect to your husband, I know. but considering the circumstances, right. you know this person has a very big heart. Right. She ain't did nothing to this baby. And, uh, it, it got me, girl. It rocked me. I was like, no, nah. I prayed. When I tell you, I was praying. So you being here is an answered prayer. Oh, thank um, you. For not just me, but the staff at Warrior Nation. Uh, I told everybody, y'all, we got to pray. This, 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 she did not do this. It's just, it's not making sense. And so I refused to make the pieces fit uh, because it was just so apparent that God's hand was on you. Um, and I know that God had a purpose for you, even in the jail cell. Did you find yourself there, you know, like being at peace about it? Oh, I, and um, I can't remember. I think it, I would, okay, I guess you can call it peace. It mm -hmm. was also, I mean, and that's why I have to be picky about my words because mm -hmm. I don't want to say I was comfortable. Yeah, I get it. But, I mean, I guess it was. Like, the way I envisioned line, um, Daniel in the den is mm -hmm. that he was just chilling with the lions. Yeah. And... My husband would talk about me mm -hmm. because I would get off the phone with him because the girls are calling me to come play spades. <laughs> and so our, the girls are calling me because they want me to make Kia quesadillas. Uh -huh. So 
it was like... Did y'all name the case of this kid? Case they of named... They was like, girl, girl. They said, we're going to name these after you because they're... So, and and I, I, I did do my thing on those cases. <laughs> but it became like... They do become like family. Mm -hmm. So, with... And the one thing, like, I think... They became this joke or... Um, an insult was that they would mm -hmm. hope something happened to me in there. Mm -hmm. And just like watching TV are things you, you think that with my charge that I was at risk, but yeah, they were just so welcoming. Mm -hmm. And when I first got my hearing mm -hmm. um, for a new trial, I didn't know like his something that one of the girls, they would put me on game mm -hmm. before I went down the road. Got you. They said, don't tell anybody you're charged. They said, if they ask, just tell them that um, you don't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I told them. I don't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm thinking nobody knows my charge. Mm -hmm. Well, once it starts hitting the news, the news that we're watching in here, right? some of the girls came up to me and it was like, I'm so glad that you're getting this chance. I mm -hmm. hope it goes well for you. When I first heard awesome. about your charge, I said, there's no way. Yeah. So these are other inmates who mm -hmm. are just like, we ain't, we're, we're cheering for you. Yeah. We, you know. God has a way of reminding us that he hasn't left us. Yes. Like, if you may feel forsaken, you, you can sit there and be like, I cannot believe him I'm in this prison. Right. Or you can just thank God at the fact that you're not in here fighting with anybody. Exactly. And you have a support system around you, even in this space. Like, God mm -hmm. will just dispatch his angels around That's and about it. you. Yeah. And I love that for you because I feel you, you mentioned that you still talk, you have friends there that yes. you're still communicating with. And that has to be so beautiful. Oh, yes. Yeah, because you're giving them hope. Yeah. So what is that like? What is it like now having friends that you connected to, you know, in prison? Well, some of them, some of them are um, already home mm -hmm. and we awesome. talk sporadically. Mm -hmm. um, everybody has lives, but yeah. we do still check in. And then there's, there's mainly, there's one who's actually up for a new trial now. Mm -hmm. um, but hers is taking, is going through the the um, system mm -hmm. way longer than mine did. And she's an epileptic, so I pray for her dearly. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's another one who I'm like the liaison between her and her attorney. Mm -hmm. Because something that happens is that attorneys like to feel like they can play you. Mm -hmm. Um, especially if you're in prison, they think, oh, well, you don't have a way to call me because if I don't answer, how are you going to, you know? Right, right. And so I'm constantly on him. You've been a voice make, for her. Exactly, yeah. to make sure. Because she's just trying to get home with her kids. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they gave her 20 years for her first drug offense. Mm -hmm. And it was just, Mississippi is so crazy to me. Mm -hmm. But I'm... Um, so it feels good to be able to do yeah. that because while I was there, I would have more, um, I would call him and ask him to put somebody on three-way because their family might not be able to afford phone calls mm -hmm. um, or things like that. But to be able to be home and do it myself for them, um, I'll do anything short of just being able to get them out myself yeah. that I can. Yeah. So it's a blessing is what I it love is. It. So have you had any triggers since being exonerated of this crime? Like, have you been triggered the only thing, the only thing that really triggers me, I think, is when we, because me and my husband love court shows, mm -hmm. and, but watching a scene of anything that's in a, that's given a verdict mm -hmm. is a trigger for both of us, and especially me. It's like um, in that moment, I'm that defendant, mm -hmm. and I might not even know what the case is about, mm -hmm. but um, like this summer. My um, earlier in the summer, late uh, spring, me and my one of my friends, we uh, Lavender, we jury, we trial watched mm -hmm. a lot. The Murdoch trial, and then it was a couple other more that we watched religiously, and mm -hmm. we would recap at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And then when it came time for the verdicts, our stomach was hurting. Our stomach mm -hmm. was hurting. Our um, wow. heart rate was just going. Just because to watch that setting put us back there. Mm -hmm. So that's, I think that's pretty much my only trigger. Yeah. So how has this, all of this affected your relationship with God? 
Oh, that's my homeboy. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, me and him talk. I think we were actually, because I was cleaning up this morning. We actually were having a conversation this morning while I was cleaning up. And it was about my kids mm -hmm. because I was asking him, I need you to help me figure out what to do with these kids mm -hmm. because I don't understand why what I'm teaching them mm -hmm. isn't sticking. Yeah. And so I don't believe in like, I don't believe that what I hear is actually his voice, mm -hmm. but I believe he's giving me guidance in the conversation. Mm -hmm. So essentially I'm talking to myself, mm -hmm. but I feel like... You're talking to God. Yes. <laughs> and so when I said that, back to myself, I said, well, how many times do you not do mm -hmm. what he asked you to do? Mm -hmm. You know, so then it became a... Okay. Yeah. I see what you did there. Yeah. So I love my relationship with God because mm -hmm. it allows me to see my children differently. Mm -hmm. um, it allows me to see my husband differently mm -hmm. than I would because sometimes I run off the rails. Mm hmm I run off the rails just with chaos. Um, pregnant, wife, mother, I'm in school, mm -hmm. and I work. I don't know if I said I work. Yeah. But so all of those, we have conversations. I have an hour drive to and from work. We mm -hmm. have conversations because if not, I'll stray away mm -hmm. because we oftentimes find time to be pregnant, mm -hmm. to be a mother, to mm -hmm. be a wife, to work. And we don't have, find time to be a child, mm -hmm. to be his child. Yes, it's so true. And so talking to him puts me in my place. Yeah. So we're cool. Puts you in a child's place. Puts me in a child's place. Yes. We're cool, mm -hmm. but it's like same as the relationship with my mama. Mm hmm my mother and I are cool, but we I know yes. to step you know back in that place. Uh -huh. That's it. Right. And so that's my relationship with him. I love it. That's beautiful. So is there anything you would like to say to the inmates who may be watching and see this episode of Friend Fusion? Like I know I know it is something you would like to say to them. Push through. That's your camera. Tell them. Push through. Mm -hmm. It's I think the hardest thing about being an inmate is that you're an inmate. Mm -hmm. Um to be placed in a box because I work with inmates now and they don't know my past. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes um, you tend to think that someone who is in a better position than you thinks they're better than you. Mm -hmm. But remember who you are mm -hmm. in the kingdom, not in the, not in the cell, not in the, the open bay unit, Remember who you are in the kingdom. Push through. The end that they say is not always the end. Mm -hmm. And just pray. Mm -hmm. Pray for a sane mind, a kept mind, a kept body, mind, and spirit. And that's what I would pray every night mm -hmm. before I went to bed. I slept good. I mm -hmm. slept fine because before I went to bed, I asked God to keep me covered, mm -hmm. allow no harm to come to me. Mm -hmm. And I would wake up every morning. No harm had come to me, and I would thank him for that. Yeah. I think a lot of times that's what we forget is that we pray for something. And God actually answers us. And we forget to talk back. Mm -hmm. We forget to thank him mm -hmm. because once we come up, we forget how we got there. Yeah. And um, I think that's what this situation has taught me a lot of. Mm -hmm is to not forget where I was a year ago. Yeah. Um, because although I was free, mm -hmm. I still could not even get a job because yeah. of my background. Mm -hmm. And now here I am completely shackle free. And, you and I just have inmates. to remember. <laughs> huh? And, and I work with inmates. It's a complete right. circle. Yeah, I work complete with circle. So I'm their voice. 
and I have to remember where I came from mm-hmm. because I'm no better than you. Yeah. So um, I'm thankful for my situation. Yes. It seems like God was preparing you for it. Like, yeah. Even though it sounds crazy. Yes. Oh, <laughs> no. I yeah. am absolutely. <sighs> my brother. My brother does not. I don't know if he's going to be upset. I don't care. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we are actually at some point in our life mm-hmm. thinking about going into law to some degree mm-hmm. because we want to fight the system. Yeah. And you cannot, I mean, you can fight the system mm-hmm. through protest and, and social media posts, mm-hmm. but you have to dismantle the system from the inside. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's what he was showing me mm-hmm. needed to be done. Wow. So that's where we're headed. I'm so excited for you. Thank you. And God has turned your situation completely around. Yes. Um, you've gone from not seeing your babies to having another one. Yes. Are you excited? Yes, we actually did plan. Uh-huh. But something I now am very adamant about. Yeah. Do not plan to mm-hmm. get pregnant for gender. Mm-hmm. Because I don't know what told me it's going to be a girl. Yeah. Because I really wanted a girl. Uh-huh. Um, but it's a boy. But I am... Um, my Morris is my Morris the fifth is mm-hmm. my heart. It's mm-hmm. my baby. So I don't know how it's gonna work for me to have another little boy. Right. But <laughs> I am just so grateful and thankful yes. for the opportunity. God is faithful. He's so yes. faithful. So I have a question to ask you. Mm-hmm. Actually I have a few here, but I'm gonna see which one I wanna nail down. This one is good. I need this one. How would you encourage a friend who is watching who may be dealing with private as well as public ridicule? Um, let's see. Public. So I've never been a public person. Mm -hmm. So one thing I do advise people before it even gets to that point is to not be a a public person. Mm -hmm. Keep your venting does not belong on social media. Mm -hmm. That will nip a lot in the bud because at mm-hmm. that point, people are really only going on what they think, what they believe, what they're making up. Mm-hmm. Um, but if there does come to a point where there's public ridicule, ignore it. Ignore it. I mean, honestly, you're not going to win. Mm-hmm. It. You will be so do so much better being the bigger person mm-hmm. because what do you win? Mm-hmm. I mean, I think there are some situations. There are some situations where responding is beneficial. Mm-hmm. If you have receipts and you just, yeah. then okay. Mm-hmm. But the back and forth is unnecessary. Yeah. It creates. <sighs> no. Because it's just a breeding ground for I get mess. It. I get it. I get it. I've, I... Never, I've never gone through anything to the extent of what, of what you have, of course. But I've been lied on. And I felt the need to not only respond and, you know, prove my case, pull out my receipts. Right. Um, I felt... Like I needed to do more or show up differently so I could be validated just to like I can prove that I'm not what they're saying I am. I'm not all the things. And it was more stressful than anything. Right. So I think you're absolutely right. You just have to ignore it. Yeah. Uh, the people who want to believe you will believe That's you. That's it. The people who are for you will be for you. That's it. You don't have to stress out. You don't have to worry because at the end of the day, if God is for you, that's it. You standing, you sitting here free today. That's it. You're not, in, you're not in jail. You don't that's have to worry about going back to jail. That's it. God has freed you from it, and God will free any of us from it. But I think it's some, something that having that confidence in Him that says, "I don't even need to respond. Yeah. He will fight for me. Because He will it, speak it, for me. It, it, that's exactly what it is. It just creates a breeding ground for mess, drama, mm-hmm. and. It, it, it is just yeah. like you said. Who's ever going to believe you? They're going to believe you yeah. without, with or without. Mm-hmm. So there's it. no point in trying to fight it. No. So is there anything that you wish you had said to Jariah before her passing? I mean, I always told her I loved her. Mm-hmm. I told her night night, and I told her I loved her that night before she went to bed. Mm-hmm. But 
I don't know if she heard me. Mm -hmm. Because she was coughing in her sleep. Mm -hmm. So, if there was anything that I could tell her now, mm -hmm. I would tell her thank you. Mm -hmm. I would tell her thank you for leaving the impression that she did on me and leaving the impression that she had no idea she was going to leave on her siblings. Mm -hmm. um, actually, this year, Aubrey X randomly. It may have been in, like, May. Mm -hmm. She said, you know, when is Jeremiah's birthday? And I said, it's in July. And um, usually, we go and get ice cream and we go to the park mm -hmm. for her birthday. Um, but this year, Aubrey said, let's throw her a party. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, what do you want to do? She said, let's throw her a party. And um, we have cake. And we'll sing happy birthday to her, and we'll send her a wish to heaven. And so we did wow. that. We got her cake. We sang happy birthday. And when we blew out the candle, we blew out a candle. We sent a wish to heaven, to heaven for her. Yeah. And she always, despite the grief mm -hmm. that she left behind, her passing was never a source of animosity mm -hmm. between Morris and myself. It was never, we didn't talk about it for a minute at first because of the grief. Mm -hmm. But once the pain eased a little, mm -hmm. we would find ourselves just randomly talking about memories with her. Yeah. Our memories of her. And um, so I appreciate the light that mm -hmm. she left behind. How were you able, and we're gonna wrap up here shortly, but how were you able to just embrace Jariah, finding out about her after the fact? Um, how were you able to just love on her the way you, because I'm telling you the videos, the pictures, it was like, this is your baby. Did you have this baby? And she was, yeah. <laughs> because she didn't do anything. Yeah. She, she was not, I was upset with Morris. Mm -hmm. I was angry with him. Mm -hmm. Because if we were still outside, you should have let me know. Right. But to, to lie to me is what I was really more so upset with him about. Mm -hmm. But with her, mm -hmm. no, she was the yes. sweetest little, had the biggest gummy smile yeah. and the sweetest little laugh. I had no, there was no way I could have yeah. not just fallen completely in love. I became so protective of her. Mm -hmm. And um, there was this text message going around that people um, saw that I had actually sent to two of my best friends mm -hmm. after I left court one day. Not court, a meeting with my attorneys. Mm -hmm. And they asked me, they said, why did you take her in? Mm -hmm. And then I went to explaining the politically correct explanation. Mm -hmm. And they said, no, why did you take her in? Mm -hmm. And after like just sitting there for like 20 minutes, I understood, like it just came to me yeah. that I took her in because she was like me. And that whole situation, out of all of those messy people on the outside, mm -hmm. out of her mom, her dad, she and I were the two independent variables that had nothing to do with anything. Mm -hmm. Neither of us placed ourselves in that position. Yeah. So I clung to her mm -hmm. as my strength hmm. because I didn't want her to be hurt the way I was. Wow. So it was very easy mm -hmm. because she was innocent. Yeah. She was innocent. How did you deal with the people you could have never expected, the family and friends who turned on you? How did you deal with it and the process of everything? So that was um, something mm -hmm. because, and it was very unexpected. That's why I tell people now, baby, his family is his family. Mm -hmm. There are some gems you find that, your in-laws can be just amazing. Mm -hmm. And I tell them, my, my friend has one, and she, and I tell her, baby, hug your mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. Like, just, if that's, 
who that's the gym in law that you have hug her mm -hmm. um because i didn't have many in-laws i do have some mm -hmm. but i think i was very naive Mm -hmm. Because if I had just opened my eyes a little bit, I would have seen the signs mm -hmm. because the red flags were there. Um, but it was very heartbreaking mm -hmm. because I think the biggest part was this. <sighs> my night, um, me being naive mm -hmm. and me trusting these people gave them credibility. Mm -hmm. So it taught me to be stingy with your trust, with my trust, mm -hmm. because I had opened my arms, my home, my heart to these people, and because I did that, it gave them the credibility to spew lies about me because they were unhappy with their with, own lies, yeah, their own thing, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, how I dealt with them, mm -hmm. cut them off mm -hmm. immediately. Um, once it became clear and evident, there was nothing more for me to say. I actually, one of the main culprits that had actually been my best friend, I think I sent her a message like a year ago to let her know that I forgive her and that I really pray that she would get herself right before anything happened to her. Mm -hmm. I don't know if she actually ever saw it, actually read it, um, but I, it was on my heart to let her know that she needed to get herself right. Yeah. But other than that, no words, yes. no energy, nothing. You are, you are grace for this. Because there are so many people who will still be behind the bars right now fighting, cussing, fussing. You, you remind me of, of Joseph. And even though he went to jail for something he didn't do, and, you know, Joseph was a dreamer, and he found himself even in jail you know, like telling people what their dreams meant. Right. And that was always what he was assigned to do in the earth. But I think with so many variables that had happened and he had gone to, if you know the story, he had gone to Potiphar's house and then Potiphar's wife accused him right. of some things and his brothers had already sold him into slavery. So many things happened so to him. So many things. And yet he trusted God. He didn't stop. He did not. His character just it spoke, speaks volumes. I wrote in my book, Now Not Next, that Joseph is just a full representation of good character. And God was with him, I think, because of his character. And mm -hmm. I see that in you as well. Like God is with you because of your character. You haven't talked about how you wanted to fight back. You haven't talked about how you was miserable in prison. You you just handled it with grace and integrity because you knew you had this confidence that God is yeah. with you. And I don't know, uh, sis, you just giving me Joseph vibes, and I'm just honored to sit in your presence uh, and just pull from your strength. I feel like uh, if I could say anything to anybody watching today, I would say, you know, be grateful. Yes. Be grateful because uh, if you can sit here and be grateful. If you can sit here and talk about God's goodness and talk about how God has caused you and your husband to overcome so many things, your family, yeah, yeah. just be grateful. That's be it. grateful. What do you want to leave with our viewers today? Um, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so especially support, any supporters, um, thank you. Mm -hmm. I think people don't understand the power that we have, and I wish that we as a people mm -hmm. could understand the power that we have as a collective. Mm -hmm. um, if we would use the power that we use to fight for one injustice mm -hmm. to dismantle the system, we absolutely, we absolutely could. Mm -hmm. And another thing is that, because something I had to tell my mom mm -hmm. and a few others, um, because we get so engulfed in social media, mm -hmm. things that we see on the news. And I did it really quickly. There was no, nothing other than that she brought me something or she told me something about a news article. Somebody had been arrested or something. Mm -hmm. And I said, Mama, do you remember the article about me? Mm. And she said, you know what? You're right, because I just I just want people to understand that the system is not built for us. Mm -hmm. So what that means is that the D, the DA's office starts 
their game, they have a long game. Mm -hmm. So before charges are filed, they start formulating their long game. Mm -hmm. And so that means starting with putting together the narrative. The narrative that we see mm -hmm. is not always right. So I just ask for people to take a moment and before you share that button, before you push that share button, and before you place that comment, to think about it, to take a second, and to just realize that not everything we read is true. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some that you just look at and you, you see the, the actual evidence with it. Right. But for just a storyline... Mm -hmm. That's why there are so many innocent people in prison. Mm -hmm. Because a story looks good. Right. It's so quick. Social media has created, first of all, the sense of entitlement. Mm -hmm. And that we think our opinions, we think our opinion is just our opinion. Mm -hmm. But unknowingly, opinions on social media create facts. Mm. And that's what destroys lives. So I just want people to take a moment and think about it before they hit their share button and before they post that comment. Yeah. And that's it. Well, thank you so much. No problem. Thank you. You told me that you have denied so many interviews. You, are you, can you tell us why you came to Free Infusion? Do we know yet? I really don't. You don't? I do not. Well, there was just something you. about you that was like, <laughs> do it. Thank you. Do it. Thank you. I'm so grateful. No problem. Thank you so much. Um, friends, thank you for watching this episode of Friend Fusion. Uh, our new friend, Miss Takia Beverly. But your friends call you Kia. Kia. So we need to say Kia, y'all. That's it. <laughs> Kia Beverly has really blessed us with the story today. I hope that when you watch this episode, it leaves you with the impression to be more gracious, to extend grace, um, to give yourself grace, and to just trust that God is with you. Regardless of what's happened to you, happening around you, there's a God who sits high and he looks low. And he will not leave you or forsake you. He Amen. will speak for you. And uh, we serve a God who vindicates. I just want to leave that with my friends today. We serve a God who frees. We serve a God. Listen, when it comes to your shackles, it, there will be no more. And so don't worry about fighting. Don't worry about clapping back. Just like Takiyah says, before you go out and you share that comment, before you go to share a story that you even saw, just remember to extend grace because where they are, it's going to be just like this and you could be in the same seat. Um, I was sharing with my friend before we started this episode that Takiyah was just like you and I, working a regular job, doing life as she know it, and then all of a sudden this happens. So it can happen to any of us. So be mindful of that. I love y'all. I pray that this episode bless you as much as it, as much as it has blessed me. And I cannot wait to see you guys back on the next episode of Friend Fusion. Whatever you do, friend, friend well. I love you guys, and I see you soon. Did you really think I was going to play nice with you? Did you really think I was going to come in here and be what? Above it all? You are a mean woman. You asked for it. <laughs>